Hey, what's up guys? Doing some more work to my son's 2013 Ford Focus ST. We just got done doing the driver's side inner and outer tie rod ends. Um, I figured I'd just do a quick video on the uh, passenger side inner and outer tie rod ends because I did a video not too long ago on my daughter's 2012 Ford Focus, but that's just the basic Focus, not the ST. And I noticed the ST is just a little bit different. So I figured I'll do a quick video on the passenger side inner and outer tie rod end. So since I'm going to be doing the uh, passenger tie rod end, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle and just uh, turn the wheel all the way to the left uh, just to give us better access to that tie rod end before we go ahead and uh, start jacking it up. So for safety, I'm just going to go ahead and put a uh, block behind the driver's side rear wheel here or you can pull your uh, parking brake up. So next, I'm going to go ahead and jack it up on the passenger front here. You can see this arrow here. That's our jack point. Uh, I'm going to go right underneath the uh, pinch weld here, and then we should have enough room to get our uh, jack stand right next to it. So that's why I'm using this small jack. And then go ahead and grab your jack stand. And like I said, I'm going to go right next, next to the jack here on the pinch weld. Not right there like that. Then go ahead and lower the jack, get that out of the way. Next, go ahead and uh, remove your wheel and tire here. You can see this has uh, aftermarket wheels, uh, but I believe the uh, stock lug nuts are gonna be a 21 millimeter. So go ahead and remove those. So now with that wheel and tire off, that gives us access to our uh, outer tie rod end, which is going to be right here. And then, of course, our inner one is going to be that piece there. So first, we need to go ahead and uh, break free this uh, lock nut here. And a lot of times, those can be uh, kind of seized on there. So I'm just going to grab a pan here, take some WD-40 or PB blaster, and just kind of soak right in here on these threads and then that lock nut there. And then just let that soak for a minute here, and then we'll try and break that free. So after that's had some time to soak, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can break this lock nut free. You can see somebody's been on here before, and looks like this is all chewed up. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is going to break free or not. But uh, that's going to be a 24 millimeter. And what we're going to do, because um, we need to twist this upward towards the inner tie rod end. So... We're going to actually be tightening this instead of loosening it. So you want to turn that uh, clockwise to see if we can break this free. So get your wrench on here and this will move. You can see the grease coming out of there, but it'll kind of lock onto there. So reposition your wrench here and let's see if we can break this free. you're seeing broke that free and if you have trouble breaking that free um, you can always use a, a torch and some heat just heat this whole area up for a good you know three to five minutes get that really hot and then that should break free easily with some heat so then just uh, make sure this is again broken free all the way so I'm just gonna turn that a little bit here That should be good right there like that. Next, let's go ahead and break free uh, this nut here for your uh, tie rod in there. That's gonna be a 15 millimeter. So go ahead and break that free. And you can just go ahead and remove that. And if this whole thing starts turning on you, you can put a uh, Allen wrench inside here I think it's like a five millimeter or something, but you can stick that in there and then just get a 15 millimeter wrench on here and turn it uh, to where this doesn't turn. Next, we need to separate the tie rod end from the steering knuckle here. So I'm gonna take a mini sledge and I'm just gonna hit right on the steering knuckle here. Or since we're replacing this tie rod end, uh, you can always just hit on the stud here. Uh, either way works, but if you're gonna be reusing your uh, outer tie rod, you wanna hit right here.
there that's separated so now i'll go ahead and remove the outer tie rod in and when i pull this off i'm going to count how many times it does a full 360 uh, that way when we put the new one on we can turn it the same amount of times that way the alignment's not going to be way off even though we are going to get this aligned afterwards just driving it to the alignment shop it's not going to be way off so what you do is you're going to count how many times so I'll this is where it started at so it's uh kind of upside down so it fits into the steering knuckle so you're going to go there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen so right there so right at 18 turns uh this came off so i'm gonna go ahead and write that down just so i don't forget Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, lock nut here. So I'm just going to take a pair of vice grips here to kind of hold this uh, inner tie rod in, keep it from spinning, and then I'll use my impact to remove that nut there. And you can see how chewed up this inner tie rod is just from, I guess, the alignment shops trying to turn it. I'm not really sure why that's like that. But get this on here just so you can hold it, keep it from uh, spinning. And grab your 24 millimeter and let's break that off of there just like that next grab a pair of pliers we're going to remove this uh, clip here uh, that way we can slide the boot off after we get that clip off as well so you can just get on this and we will be reusing this boot. So just slide that off like that. So now we need to remove that clip that's on the uh, inside right there. Not sure how well you guys can see this. I'll try and zoom in though. So you can see there's the clip there. And uh, we're going to have to break this one. Because we won't be reusing this. So what I like use is a just a flathead screwdriver. And you're going to get in there. And then you're just going to kind of get it in that slot and you're going to turn. So turn your screwdriver either way. And then it kind of breaks free that clip there. And of course it's not really breaking on for me. But if you can get up under it, just like that. You can see the clip separated now. So if you can get it out of here. So there's that. So now we can go ahead and remove the boot. So you may have to just kind of pull on this and it kind of pops off there. Go ahead and slide that off all the way. Now we got access to uh, go ahead and get our uh, inner tie rod off here. So since this is the uh, factory inner tie rod, um, this whole portion right here is just round. There's no slots or anything to get the inner tie rod tool on there and uh, break this free. Uh, the foot pounds on this is right at 50 foot pounds. Uh, so really not that tight. So you can use uh, two methods here. You can use this tool here. This is an inner tie rod tool. I got this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for it. It's only like 10 bucks. You can use this style, or if you want, you can use um, just this pair of vice grips. This is what I used on the driver's side and I was able to break it free, no, no problems. So what I did was I kind of got, got in here and got this nice and tight. 
around here. So if you get locked on there, just like that. And then you should be able to just pull this. Um, so you want to go counterclockwise, lefty loosey to break this free. <clears throat> just like that. So once you get that broken free, this will now twist off of here. So, and let me just show you guys here on this other method. So if you guys can't use your vice grips to break that free, like I said, you can use this tool here. And the way this works is this is going to go through here. And then you're going to loosen up these uh, nuts here. So get these loose on the U-bolt. And then what you're going to do is just kind of get this onto here. So you can see how it goes around that like that. And then you'll tighten up these two uh, nuts for your U-bolt. And then you'll be able to get an extension in here with your ratchet. And this will be nice and tight on here. And then you can just break that free. So that's the other method to use. But I just find the uh, vice grips a lot easier. Um, I will be using the inner tie rod tool to uh, tighten this up and get it torqued. So I'll show you that here uh, once we get the new one on. But that's how this tool works. So pretty simple on this as well. So then you can go ahead and just uh, twist this off the rest of the way. And if you notice, there is that pink spacer. So we will be reusing this pink spacer on the uh, new tie rod. And then just uh, take note. So sometimes this little uh, rubber sleeve here, this will come or uh, stick it onto the rack and pinion, or sometimes it comes out with the boot. But just take note, there is that rubber sleeve on this boot as well. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at our new and old parts. So I decided to go with the factory uh, Motorcraft OEM ones um, because I used the Moog ones on my daughter's 2012 Focus, just the basic Focus. And it shows that those do not fit uh, the ST model for some reason. So for some reason, the inner tie rod ends is just a little different on the ST models. That's why I just decided to go with the factory OEMs because I didn't want to have any issues. And then the... Uh, tie rod as well i went with the uh motorcraft ones but it does show that the moog ones will fit on the st models on this so if you guys want to go with a little cheaper one i just decided to go with factory ones um the inner tie rod ends um these are going to be the same part number for the uh, driver and passenger side and i got all this off amazon i'll put links in the description but here's the part number for the inner uh tie rods and then your outer tie rod ends are going to be uh different per side so you can see this one has an r on it so the right side is going to be a different part number than the left but there is the uh passenger side or right side part number and i'll put a link in the description for the uh, driver's side as well just so you guys have that and this is just to protect the boot during shimping so you take this off and then it does come with a new uh, nut and same with on your inner one it has this new lock nut and this is a sealed unit you can see the old one I pulled off. Uh, this has been replaced before. That's the uh, greasable style there. And then one other thing to notice. So if you take a look. So you can see. This is what I'm talking about. So you got these slots here. Um, and that gets you this uh, little. Um, it's almost like a U. I'll show you here on the uh, tie rod tool. But that slips in there. And then the sleeves goes over this. And then that tightens this up. But you can see on the factory one. There's no no groove or slot for that so at least uh motorcraft updated that so then just take this uh pink spacer here you can see the grooves the groove side is going to go against uh, this end here but we do need to put some uh loctite on these threads so let me grab some of that real quick so i'm just going to use some blue loctite here some of the uh other brands of inner tie rods will have it already on the threads but you can see the motorcraft doesn't so I just get that kind of mixed on there or some will have an actual just a small little tube in here and then you can put some uh, thread locker on it. 
So get that on there. And then again, uh, with all these grooves, that's going to go against the inner tie rod. That slides on there like that. So now let's go ahead and stick this on. All right, guys. So this is uh, the tool I'm going to be using to uh, tighten it up and get it torqued. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight one. And the way this works is you got all these different uh, sizes here, but you're going to want to use this uh, 336 millimeter. That's going to go into these two grooves here. So if you take it and you push it on here, actually, let's go this side. It's a pretty tight fit. So you got to get it on there kind of just right. So get that pushed on there like that. And then this is going to go in through here and see it'll kind of lock into place on there. So this will go inside there just like that. And then you can turn this and that's uh, how we're going to torque this. Or you can use that other tool that I just showed you. Uh, either one works, but I'm going to use this one. So I'll show you how. So then go ahead and uh, get this in here. We'll go ahead and screw it on. So like I said, I just left that on there for when we go to tighten it. And like I said, you can use either tool if you guys want to. Um, you could always get this one, put this one on there as well. You can use that. Or um, you can still even just use the pair of vice grips and just kind of uh, tug on that to about where you would think uh, 50 foot pounds would be. So all three ways work, but go ahead and uh, get this uh, started in there again make sure your uh, thread lockers on there and you got that pink spacer there so then just go ahead and twist this on here just go hand tight and then we'll get our uh, special tool and our torque wrench it's about right there like that and then let me move my camera so I can get my torque wrench in here Okay, so then go ahead and take your uh, tool here, go ahead and slide this over. And lock into those tabs there. Take your torque wrench, set that to 50 foot pounds. And let's go ahead and tighten that up. Just like that. Like I said, it really doesn't take much. Uh, if you guys wanna use the vice grip method, that works just as good, just get it nice and snug. And then go ahead and try to get this uh, piece off of here. Might be kind of stuck on there. So if you need to, see if you can get just a small flat head under there. Kind of pry that off of there like that. Get that out of the way. Next, you can go ahead and uh, take off this lock nut here. Go ahead and get our, our boot on next. So the way I'm going to do this is you can use a large zip tie or you can get the uh, same style clamps that you uh, took off on the inner one. Or what I use is just a uh, normal hose clamp here. So you want to find one that'll fit around this portion here. So you can see that's going to fit just perfectly around there and I like to kind of face the hose clamp um, more on this side that way I can reach in here with my eight millimeter and just kind of tighten that up so what I like to do is just kind of get this uh, somewhat tight on here but not totally tight just to where it ain't gonna fall off so kind of like that and then again, just make sure that a uh, little rubber sleeve is inside there. And then you're going to go ahead and slide this over. And you will need to kind of push this on. And then push it past this point here. So kind of like that. And then you'll just kind of push this onto the rack and pinion. Just make sure that hose clamp gets on there and you may need to push this in more 
and then we can pull it out just a little bit after we get that hose clamp tightened on here. So let me reposition my camera. So bear with me guys, I'm trying to get you guys the best uh, light and angle here. But you wanna just make sure that boot is totally on to the rack and pinion. And then you can see I can get my socket wrench in here, but I'm just gonna rotate this hose clamp just a little bit because I don't want that catching on anything. So maybe about right there like that. And then I can take my eight millimeter and I'll be able to tighten up that hose clamp there. So sorry guys, I just lost my other light. Hopefully you guys can see this. But once you get your hose clamp positioned where you want it, you can reach through here with your eight millimeter and then you can go ahead and tighten up that hose clamp. So get on there, go ahead and get this tight. You want to get that nice and snug because you don't want water or moisture getting into your rack and pinion. So I think we're good right there like that. And then I like to just give it a tug. So just kind of pull on it. You want to make sure that isn't going to pop off. So I think we're good right there like that. Just double check. Tug on it back here. So I think we're good like that. So next, let's go ahead and pull this boot back uh, to this portion right here. That's where our original clip was. So just take it and just kind of pull on it if you can. Get your fingers in here. It can be kind of stuck on there. It's hard to get your grip on it. There we go. So get that into position right there like that. Grab your uh, your clip here. And let's go ahead and get that back on there. So right there like that. Should be good. Next, you're gonna take some uh, some anti-seize, I'll put a link in the description for this as well. And you wanna coat these threads. Your uh, alignment guy is gonna thank you for that. Cause you wanna make sure these are nice and lubed up for when uh, they do the alignment. This tie rod will turn nice. So just get uh, quite a bit of the anti-seize on these threads. that and then you're going to take your uh, lock nut here go ahead and screw that on there and just work that anti-seize in on all these threads here so you can just go all the way to the end there like that and then I'll just take a little more just put some on here and then we'll get our uh, tie rod into place so then take your new tie rod end and if you remember it was a total of 18 turns and we ended with it like this so I'm gonna start it like that so start it and then go get it on there so there's one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So once you get to 18, you can go ahead and Take this lock nut, 
We'll just kind of stick it up against the tie rod in there. Just like that. Then you're gonna go ahead and bring this over to your steering knuckle here. You have to just move this a little bit. Get that popped up through there. You may have to just kind of push on that a little bit. Get that stuck all the way through. Grab your nut. And then grab a 15 millimeter and let's go ahead and start tightening this. And this may start turning on you the whole uh, tie rod in. And it looks like it already is. So let me grab an Allen key here. So grab a five millimeter Allen and you can stick that in there and then go ahead and continue to tighten that while holding. That'll keep that from uh, spinning on you. Get that snug, and then I'll grab my torque wrench and we'll go ahead and torque that nut. So grab your torque wrench and we're gonna to torque that to 35 foot-pounds uh, with the 15 millimeter. And this will probably won't turn on you now that it's kind of somewhat snug. So you should be able to still torque it. Just like that. Next, we'll want to make sure this uh, lock nut is nice and tight, even though we are going to get it aligned after this, but just the drive over, you want to make sure that's tight. So grab your 24 millimeter, and then you can use a crescent wrench or adjustable wrench and get on this right here. You can see these two flat spots, or you can use a 23 millimeter works as well. So get on there to keep that from spinning. And then you want to go ahead and tighten up that lock nut. Just bring these two wrenches together. Make sure that's nice and tight. Just like that. So now that lock nut is uh, in place. Then go ahead and throw your wheel and tire back on. Then you go ahead and uh, get your jack under there, jack it up and uh, we'll go ahead and lower it. Let me grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque your lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. So that's all there is to it. Again, this was a 2013 Ford Focus ST. Went ahead and replaced the inner and outer tie rods. Uh, pretty simple job to do on these cars. Uh, I will go take this in the morning to get an alignment done on it. Um, I did do a separate video of replacing the lower ball joints so if you guys are interested in that check that video out but uh hopefully this video helps you out if it does why don't you subscribe to my channel check out my other videos i got quite a few on this car so check those out when you get a chance and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching